There are a lot of similarities between life and Muay Thai. Both will hit you over and over again. And if you don't learn how to defend yourself and adapt, both will knock you down. But when you get knocked down, you have two choices. Quit or stand back up and keep fighting. My name is Victor Kalaf and in September 2019, I was diagnosed with testicular cancer. I arrived in Australia in around March 2019. Uh, about four months after my arrival, I was diagnosed. Up until that point, I ne have never heard about testicular cancer. Most of my friends never heard about this as well. It's like a rare type of cancer found in men between 15 and 40, and it's commonly overlooked because it often doesn't show any symptoms. I start to have a discomfort in one of my testicles, and it was so many different things happening in my life. Uh, it took me four months to, to go to the doctor after the first uh, symptom. I know it's definitely not uh, the best thing to do. Trust me, I regret a lot. I remember exactly the moment uh, that I went to the doctor. The doctor, huge guy, bold guy, just sit, sit there. I need to talk to you. Oh, okay. Uh, I sat there and he said, mate, sorry, but you have cancer. And I know it's a horrible way to say, but the doctor, he wanted to show how dangerous that situation could be. The doctor told me I needed an urgent surgery, so I was scheduled to do a surgery the very next day to remove my testicle. It was like very sudden and I didn't have time to process everything. So after the surgery, I did some more exams and the doctors discovered that the cancer had spread to my abdomen and to my lungs, the, the famous metastasis. It meant I needed to start uh, chemotherapy immediately. I see chemo as something very aggressive, debilitating and exhausting. Finding this out was definitely the hardest hit of the whole process. Of course, my family was the first one to have the news and to support me. My mother flew to Australia like the very next week to stay with me to the first cycles of chemotherapy. And just after my sister and my father came to stay with me as well. I never felt the battle was just mine, having them by my side. I remember just before starting the treatment, I was like laying down on my bed, looking to the, to the ceiling and I started to question myself, okay, this is happening, this is not a dream, how are you gonna face it? it? Took me some time to like realize that as much as you want to be sad and I wanted to be sad at that time, it wouldn't help me. Remember the first day of uh, chemo, I was doing the treatment and I looked to the corridor and I saw a guy going towards a bell uh, attached to the wall and he rang that bell and everyone was like cheering him and applauding and saying, hmm, what is that strange, right? And the nurse um, by my side, she told me that that meant that specific guy, he finished his treatment and I thought, oh, that's cool, that's fucking amazing. I, when I when I finish the treatment, I want to hang that bell and ring as loud as I can, like as, for example, Brian Johnson in the ACDC concert. Yeah, I remember specifically that moment that oh, when I finish the treatment, I really want to ring that bell. Uh, sad enough, I was definitely the youngest guy doing the treatment there. I remember getting uh, exhausted very easily, uh, weakness in my legs, my skin, my lips, my nose all cracking and really dry, and my my beard, my hair uh, all falling apart. It, it's definitely not a problem. Uh, I was bold before the treatment, but like uh, it's part of the process. So even uh, during treatment, I still kept going to training. Uh, it really helped me to stay focused to be positive and also to burn some steam. Okay. Go. Yeah. Go. Yeah. 
So the treatment took about four months and after treatment, the doctor told me that all the results were the best possible. The tumor markers were like way down than they were in the beginning and the tumor inside my abdomen especially shrinked around 90, 95% which is amazing, but still need to be removed by surgery because this type of cancer, it's called teratoma, is the type of cancer that chemotherapy helps to reduce and to stop the growth, but doesn't kill it. So knowing that the surgery was much more delicate and aggressive was a bit scary. Uh, I hoped it wasn't necessary. The tumor was attached to my aorta, which is the biggest uh, uh, artery in your body. Any small cut could like, I could bleed to death. So like it, it was a huge and very uh, difficult surgery to be done. <laughs> so definitely those were, were the six most intense months of my life. Two surgeries, four months of chemotherapy. After all of this, I, I'm not sure if I could say I changed it as a human being, as a person, but I, I take life as not that serious and uh, I took it before. I remember before everything I put so much pressure into me to have a career, to have a, a, a life in general. Now I, I see life as like it can vanish in one second. Uh, why not enjoy every small moment, every single moment, even the small things? Yeah, I see a lot of similarities between Muay Thai and not only this process, but I mean maybe life. You have to keep training hard and hard. You're gonna get hit, hit hard, especially in the beginning. And if you don't learn how to defend yourself or stand up, you never go forward. And it was the same up for this whole process. I could not even recover from this um, mentally, not only physically. Life is a battle. Some battles leave scars. Scars that represent our past. My battle this time was cancer. A brief moment of my life that I thought everything would fall apart. But who knows when the next battle will come. So until then, I'll try to be prepared. <laughs>